Hey guys, we've got an Amstrad long plane review for the uh, Hunt for Red October. And uh, this one's uh, based on the uh, movie, uh, not to be confused with an earlier game of the same name, based on the book. And uh, it's, a, it's a long, long, long time since I've seen the movie. I just happened to see a YouTube vid of a long play of this on the, on the Amiga and Cubex's channel. And I thought I'd check this out. Because uh, uh, they completed that game in under like eight minutes, so I thought uh, thought I'd take a look, see if we do a quick uh, quick game today. And the uh, the Amstrad version's uh, just as easy to complete. Did it on my first go. But anyway, here's the title screen. It's a nice presentation of loading screen so far. Now onto the titles with some. Uh, very good Rusky style music. Ooh, animated scenes as well. Cool, very good. Very nice presentation so far. Roger Collins programmer with help from Damien Stones. I'm not really aware if they've done anything else uh, decent on the Amstrad. As far as I can make out, this is Roger Collins' only game for the Amstrad. And Damien Stones, he worked on uh, Back to the Future Part 2. Did a video for that recently. He also programmed a space gun for the Amstrad, which is really awful. Now it's a long, 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 long time since I've seen the movie. I don't really remember much about it. I was just uh, having a look through my older video collection to see if I, actually, if I still had a had it taped from TV. I couldn't find it, so uh, I'm not going to yammer on too much about the movie. But uh, the plot line follows a. Uh, Soviet submarine captain by uh, Sean Connery in the movie and the uh, Soviets have created a new uh, submarine uh, that runs solid due to a revolutionary propulsion system um, it's also carrying some uh, really dangerous nuclear weapons so he, he decides to uh, defect the uh, USA and you as Jack Ryan played by Alec Baldwin in the movie is, is there to basically assist the uh, defection Obviously the Russians are not too happy about him defecting. Anyway, let's uh, let's get this started. Apologies guys, I'm a little bit tired and uh, hungover today. Perhaps not going to be one of my best reviews, but anyway. First mission. We'll get Jack Ryan onto the uh, submarine from a helicopter. It's um, not particularly well done this level. It's a bit basic and crap. Yeah, easily done. I think you're supposed to get him smack in the middle and he might get a bonus life or something like that. But uh, as long as you're not too far from the submarine before you uh, press the fire button to drop him, you'll always uh, complete that and move on to this mission. Level 2. Got to navigate her through the underwater canyons with the ice above you. And here we go. Initially, it looks like a R-type ripoff, but underwater. First impressions: we got Mode One graphics on the go, which is basically four-color graphics, and this feels very much like. Uh, the R-Type port that was done for the Amstrad and taking a look at the Spectrum footage of the game on YouTube it looks pretty similar so yeah this this looks like and feels like a Speccy port and just like the R-Type port um, well the Speccy version of this level it's, it's really quite fast and um, responsive and stuff like that this is really laggy like you're hitting the fire button and uh, you're not always firing your uh, torpedoes and stuff, there's a bit of a lag going on 
is a lot slower. For some reason, I can't pick up that special item there. Hmm. This is a few bugs. But yeah, um, you can tell this has been ported from the Spectrum version because it uh, runs a lot slower, a lot laggier, and uh, less responsive. Anyway, I still can't pick up items there, a bit strange. The S icon there, that's a smart bomb that will blow up everything on the screen. E there below, that's E for energy. Pick that up, but we already uh, ran into the rocks and lost half the energy again, oh well. But as we've heard, uh, a lot of uh, movie licenses in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, it's fairly typical to have sort of a variety of levels. And this game's no exception. You saw the first level there, which is a drippy guy into the submarine, and now into some kind of like R type meat scramble type clone. There's another sort of, uh, there's another sort of submission. And level four on the the next level though is uh, you in a uh, little mini submarine trying to dock with uh, the Red October in a totally different style of game. After that, uh, there's a joystick waggling section, and the final level is a shoot 'em up section. That's pretty simple. It's just you against uh, one of a guy. Anyway, you uh, will come to that later. I pick up there P P for points. Who cares about getting high scores though, really? <laughs> ST pickups. I think that's super torpedoes. Sort of like homing torpedoes, but they're pretty annoying because they don't home in particularly well, as you saw there. That submarine was right on top of me. My my bloody torpedoes are sort of flying all the way, well, <laughs> swimming all the way around the uh, bloody submarine. Sometimes you're better off without the uh, super torpedoes. So you can actually shoot and kill the bastards. When you do, it, the, the instructions are not very good, it doesn't really tell you how to sort of use your weapons effectively. Firing down will drop those um, um, blue things, whatever they are, to sort of fire it up or fire upwards. Fire left and right, or just fire forward. It's not made clear in the instructions, I was wondering why I was sort of like firing torpedoes out the top of the, at the top of the sub. And my work can do it most of the time, yeah, it's simply firing up. Which is a bit awkward because you end up sort of flying up the screen when you don't need to. Probably into the enemy you're trying to shoot above you. This isn't like a perfect run, I'm going to lose a few lives in the game. But, um, like I said, I completed this on my first go, it's a pretty easy game. There we go. Sorry you missed the uh, message there. I was hitting the fire button. That was, uh, appeared too quick for me. Never mind. Anyway, level three. Transfer Jack Ryan onto the Red October by guarding the mini sub onto the hatch and then onto the airlock bit, which is the waggle the joystick section I mentioned a second ago. Anyway, oh, that looks rather nice. It seems to be better. Uh, this level seems better done than the uh, Commodore and Specky versions. It's quite nice. Holding the fire button down will halt your descent. You don't want to get. You don't want to descend too quickly. Obviously, we're trying to connect to that little sort of hatch there. Oh, nearly there. Take it easy. Line yourself up and then get down quick. There you go. Uh, here's the uh, joystick waggling section, so uh, get your joystick waggling left or right in a good decent steady rhythm. 
and waggling away there and you can see the arm power meter in the bottom right there you've got to get it to the top and keep it there so uh, he will open the hatch yay pretty easy to do really and that previous section if you do miss the hatch but you still land gracefully on the sub at any point you still complete the mission and move on to the next bit you just don't get any bonus points so we're already on to sort of basically the main uh, one of the pretty much the main last level this is just, this is slightly tougher than level 2 Take your time. There's quite a few energy pickups. I think L there. I think that gives you a life. Yeah, that's an extra life. Not that we need them. Yeah, I think that I uh, pick up there. What does I do? I think it makes you invulnerable. Yeah, limited invincibility. Yeah, this isn't really too impressive. Uh, this is the main part of the game, you know, this level and level two, and it's not brilliantly done. I mean we're talking this is what a uh, release in 1990. Imagine the hundreds and hundreds of like horizontal sort of scrolling shoot 'em ups that the uh, Amstrad has had over time and uh, you know how much better stuff from 1980 bloody 6 was compared to this. And we're still getting what looks like basically a, spe a spectrum port. Meh. It still plays okay though. But like I said, I completed this on my first go. And what if you'd paid 15 quid on uh, for this on the disc back in the day, you'd been you would have been pretty pissed off. It always seems to me, guys, 8-bit games are either far too easy or far too difficult. Never seem to get like the uh, balance just right. But hey, maybe that's just me. Oh, I remember the movie being pretty good, actually. I might have to try and track, that, track it down somehow, watch it online maybe. Remember Sean Connery was as good as ever. Obviously based on the Jack Ryan books. And that Jack Ryan character is played by Harrison Ford again in um, Patriot Games I think it was. And then again in Clear and Present Danger. I might be wrong. Yeah, he was, and I think the sum of all fears as well, but that time that was played by Ben Affleck. Can't remember who did the novels. Let's have a quick look. Oh, it's Tom Clancy, of course, Tom Clancy. Well, I think we should be getting fairly close to the end of this level. We've lost a couple of lives, but who cares? We've still got three lives left. We've nearly done it. Mm, 
pretty dull stuff. I'll sum up my review at the end. Let's just say. Uh, Let's see if I can find out what Amstrad Action gave the game at the time. Let's have a look. Um, no, I can't find a listing online for their uh, Amstrad Action score. can't imagine they rated this very highly. I haven't played the uh, other Hunt for Red October game. It's a boring simulation. Always find them a bit dull. Sorry, I was hammering the fire button there, so you just missed the uh, completion sort of message for the end of the level. I don't think it said anything interesting anyway. Right, the final level, the ship Cook, logging off, is in a mission silo, missile silo, sorry, and plans to explode one of the missiles. You can stop him, but be careful what you shoot at. So yeah, basically, yeah, wait for him to appear and shoot him, but don't shoot the uh, missiles there or the nuclear reactors or whatever they are. There he is. Moves a bit slow this this level, but nice graphics though, nice and colourful. Oops, as you can see there, shot one of the uh, missile silos. You've got the temperature at the top right there, and then his uh, energy top left, my energy bottom right. I think he just needs one more hit. There you go. Shot long enough before you could destroy the submarine. Bonus points. And there's a final completion screen. Alec Baldwin, uh, Sean Connery there. And that's it. Enter my name in the high score table. And that's all there is. That's everything of the game. Uh, I think there's a nice game over sort of screen and music. But uh, yeah, okay, well, you know, plus points. You know, nice presentation all around. I really like, uh, you know, all the sort of loading screens uh, and the music and the animation and stuff in the title screen. I love that kind of stuff when programmers go to the effort. I always talk about that. Good variety in levels. Um, most of them sort of averagely implemented. That last, last level, that last level is pretty good stuff. But again, just far too easy. Like the rest of the game, the game is just ridiculously easy. I mean, how much game is there? Sort of. Um, about eight minutes worth of game, you reckon? Maybe about sort of ten, ten or twelve minutes worth of gameplay to complete in there uh, on your first go. Good music as well. Sound effects are all right, uh, but the main submarine levels too slow, far too laggy and unresponsive. Uh, real shame. It's, 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 a, it's a movie and book that doesn't really translate well to computer games though, really. I mean, having sort of an R-type submarine-like section is a bit... <laughs> it's a bit, a bit daft and not in keeping with the movie, you know. But what, what else can you expect? So, overall... I don't know... Five and a half out of ten? but you would have been annoyed if you bought this at full price back in the day. There you go. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you on the next, the next uh, Amstrad video. Alright, cheers guys. Thanks, bye.